Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. How wonderful. Amen? Love it. I love it. It's just so awesome to, to just to feel the, the vibrance in the air. And I just, it's awesome. For whatever reason, this is that time of year that we celebrate every year at this time. We set aside the, to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Some of you might say, oh, well, Jesus wasn't born December 25th. Yeah, well, yeah, probably not. But this is what, what we celebrate, and it's awesome. And it's awesome to feel the cheer in, the, in, the, in people that usually don't. It's awesome to feel the love of Jesus as his Holy Spirit floats out and gives people. It's weird at times when, when you say that God blessed you to people during the year. Like, oh. But when you say it during the holiday season, it's oh. God bless you too. So praise the Lord. This, why don't we stand and we'll get started. We have a big crowd today. So if we can, these little guys right here, let's turn them down. Turn them off rather, please. To not uh, interrupt anything. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, thank you for this beautiful day and your kindness. What a great and wonderful God that you truly are. Thank you that you love us more than anything. We love you and we thank you for loving us and keeping us, walking with us. And as we, we come to this service to worship and adore you, as Pastor Gray's message is going to honor you, we just pray that you would just completely have your way. We love and we glorify you for all that you do. We thank you. So do your work this morning. In each heart here and those that are at the house, thank you, Father, for your great blessings. Just thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence is with us now. Be lifted up and praise in Jesus' name and everyone said, Amen. 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 Okay. Establish 
Well, good morning, Calvary Chapel. <laughs> Merry Christmas. All right. We'd like to let you know what's happening here at Calvary Chapel during this holiday season. So we have our Agape Way is meeting for Chili and a Movie next Sunday evening on the 31st for New Year's Eve. They're going to be hosting the Johnny Cash movie, The Redemption of American Icon. It's going to dive deep into the singer's inner demons, the triumphs, and the, then the gradual return to faith. Pastor Greg Laurie interviews Cash's family, friends, and business associates to reveal how the singer's true success came through finding the only person whose star was bigger than his own. So please sign up if you are coming so that they may be prepared to serve you with enough chili and hot dogs. Then we have our prayer at Hoopa Valley Sheriff Station every Thursday morning outside of the flagpole between 9 and 9.30. And just to let you know that the office will be closed beginning December 26th until Friday 29th. However, our Wednesday evening service will still be in session at 7 p.m. Then in 2024, we have our Blessed and Be Blessed Food Ministry Friday, January 19th. And the prayer meeting will still continue. And then Far Above Rubies is going to begin a Bible study. It's, it's a class for women who are dealing with loss of any type. That will begin on Thursdays, beginning February 1st, 2024, 6.30 in the multi-purpose room. It is $15 for materials. So you can see myself, Terry, or Lydia. So why don't we go ahead and pray for our tithes and offerings. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for the outlet of worship unto you, Father God, through, through music and singing, Father God. Now we have yet another act of worship where in which we can recognize you as sovereign Lord, God and King over our lives, and that is through our tithes and our offerings, Father God. So we pray and ask, would you bless these tithes and offerings and glorify yourself in Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you so much for your great love and your mercies. And as we go forth into the reading of your word, minister grace, truth, and peace, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Merry Christmas! Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. Man, it's been a great, great season and still is. We're smack in the middle of it. And so what a joy to be able to rejoice with the body of Christ, with one another, and of course with God the Holy Spirit as he's leading us this morning and so what a blessing i want to say thank you to the choir as they just donated time and effort and and uh, just things to uh prepare for this morning and you know they didn't realize it's hard to get up at uh six o'clock in the morning and get here on time ready to go they, you know we you know everybody here they, they all make it look simple you know so we wanted to share the joy this morning <laughs> you know, but what a blessing but thanks everybody uh for being here and i wanted to just give a friendly reminder uh, that the uh, the young people are dismissed, and uh, praise the Lord. And by the way, we, we have had a Daniel Guerrero sighting, and so be sure to pin him down. He did great in his college uh, courses. He's completely done, and now he's under our roof, and we're ex extremely excited for the young people. And, uh, and, and Daniel and I have been you know, sharing notes throughout the year and just been excited for this, finally to get to this point, and we're here. And so what a joy. So once again, when you see Daniel this morning and uh, during, uh, after, we, after we dismiss, be sure to give him a high five and encourage him. He, he was a bold, he took a bold step. I mean, when I walked up to this guy, you know, I said, hey, would you like to go to, to uh, Calvary Bible Institute for a year? And, it, you know, he, he kind of was like, what? You know, but yet he had the boldness to say, you know what, I'm going to do it. And then this body, uh, led by the men's ministry, this body supported his, uh, his uh, uh, made a scholarship technically. And, uh, and so talking to Pastor Jared out at, at uh, Calvary Bible Institute, he said, man, Daniel is one of our top guys. And although I wasn't, I wasn't surprised, yeah, understand, I wasn't surprised to get that report, but yet I was very proud of what the Lord is doing in this young man's life. And so we're going to benefit and our young people are going to benefit tremendously. So again, give them a high five and, you know, buy them a cup of coffee out in the lobby there, okay? <laughs> Promise me that way, well, yeah, you know, praise the Lord. And then and, and secondly, we have our Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. So after we're done uh, this morning, you know, go home, get, you know, eat your stack of pancakes and watch a little football. Take a snooze, but be sure at 4.30 to be on the road heading back to Calvary Chapel uh, for our 5 o'clock Christmas Eve service. It's going to just be kick back. Uh, just, you know, we'll keep the lights low and just put our feet up and just rejoice in God's goodness. But it's just, what, we, need to, we need to just do that as a body of Christ and uh, just be reminded of God's goodness as we sang this morning, how appropriate and, but again, so let's meet back at 5 p.m. Just for, like I said, a kickback, you know, maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes or something of just hanging out with the Lord, hanging out with one another, and then heading back and getting home plenty early and uh, just enjoying the rest of the evening accordingly. Amen? Amen. But hopefully the Lord will come and rapture, and rapture us prior to all of this. And then so we'll, we'll beat the traffic and everything. Amen? <laughs> wow. What a concept, you know, praise the Lord. Let's hold them high. Let's remind ourselves what we believe in. And then, of course, you know, invite the neighborhood to, uh, to, to have an understanding of what we believe in. I believe this is the perfected word of God. I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I desire not only to read it, 
to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it. Amen? To live it in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hey, have your Bibles open, of course, but have a pencil ready because we've got a lot of Scripture this morning, and I wanted to make sure that we all had an opportunity to jot these Scriptures down and have a reference for them later because we're going to be referencing several things. But, of course, the theme is going to be obvious. And this morning, Christmas 2023, the Christmas gift from God. And there's a Christmas gift from God because, starting off, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Now, we got to get the bad news out of the way first. And the bad news is, is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Remember last week when Jesus was teaching His disciples and of course the Holy Spirit teaching us last week, hey, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot walks you into sin, cut it off. Well, can we kind of modernize it a little bit, if you will? Because some people had some difficulty with that Scripture last week, which is fine. So let, let us have it a little easier to work with this morning with this idea the wages of sin is death. Hey, is your computer causing you to sin? then guess what? You need to cut it off. Right? I mean, we now carry a computer in our pocket now, don't we? And man, when I first saw that coming, and I had a young son, and I thought, I'm not sure if I really like this idea. This kid can go around the world in the palm of his hand, and I wasn't too hip on that, to be honest with you. Wasn't too hip at all on that. And so, hey, man, if your computer causes you to sin, get rid of it. If watching R-rated movies causes you to sin, and, and trust me, you know, the PG-13 movies, and you know this, these PG-13 movies now that we get on Netflix and, and Prime Video and things, the PG-13s, they might as well be R, R-rated films. They might as well, right? They might as well. And so if these things cause you to sin, hey, Jesus is saying, cut it off. There's other ways around. I mean, it's, it's going to be inconvenient, but if you can't handle it, then Je Jesus told us last week, cut it off. Don't be playing because this morning, the wages of sin is death. Don't think that we can fiddle around with, with sin and get away with it. Or, or don't think that Jesus sees our willingness to sin and is winking His eye. Oh yeah, hey, you know, I know your heart, man, so everything's cool, man. No. The wages, Romans 6, 23, we got to get this out of the way. We've got to have an understanding that the wages of sin is death. God had to, had to bail us out of sin. God the Father had to rescue us. He had to do that. Because the wages of sin is death. And Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Like I said, we got to get this out on the table because then, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is He your Lord this morning? The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is He your Savior? Is He your Lord? Because if He's not, hey, the wages of sin is death. The teachings of Jesus. The teachings here of the Apostle Paul. Delivered to us this morning by God the Holy Spirit. I'm not your problem. If you're engaged in any of these activities as we first started, your problem's with the Lord, not with me. Not with me at all. The gift of God, eternal life in Jesus Christ. 
That's the gift of God. So the question is, do you choose death or do you choose life? If you choose neither, trust me, you've chosen death. Do you choose death or do you choose life? John 3.16, whoever believes in Jesus, the gift of the Father, whoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's correct. Whoever believes has eternal life. Secure, yes. Those of us that have Jesus, secure, yes. But, don't you hate that word? Secure, yes, but prone to wander. Oh, that's rough. Prone to wander, when we consider our own self, we have to say, yes, Lord, I am prone to wander. Secure, yes, but I'm prone to wander. Well, we're in good company. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, just the the theme of Psalm 103 is, is pretty much, keep me close, Lord. Keep me close. Why? Because I'm prone to wander. Oh, I know you, Father God. Certainly, David would write, but Lord, keep me close. Because I know myself as well as you know me. Psalm 119.10 Oh, with my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Oh, Lord, I know you. You know me, but Lord... I confess I'm prone to wander. Let me not wander from your commandments. There's a role that we play in our salvation. It's not just a one and done type deal. We need to be acutely aware of our propensity. There's your 50 cent word for the week. Propensity, the first time I heard that word used was Howard Cosell on Monday Night Football. And I thought, I'm here to watch Monday Night Football. I'm not here to get an English teaching, Howard. And Howard was always good of giving us that sort of thing. He was a great commentator. But Lord, let us be, Lord, help me be reminded of my propensity to wander. Remember Jonah? Sure you do. Jonah took this idea of wandering way beyond our own imaginations, right? In in Jonah chapter 2, verse 9, Jonah 2, 9, Jonah is feeling and, and really proclaiming, I am in Sheol. In other words, I am... In the belly of the fish, Jonah proclaimed in Jonah chapter 2, 9, I am proclaiming claiming that I am in the waiting room of hell, Sheol. Jonah is sitting in the digestive stomach of this great fish and there's seaweed wrapped around his head and other dead, dead fish floating around in, the, in this bile and so on and Jonah is perhaps looking out out of the mouth of this great fish out of the the bars the teeth that represented the bars of Sheol he's singing I'm a dead man and this great fish is continuing to go down 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 and Jonah just says I'm done I'm finished and yet in his despair, Jonah's despair. Jonah came to his senses. I mean, I mean, there are many people here that have come to their senses. Now, there's some that, that came to the Lord, you know, as, as, as children or whatnot. And that's a wonderful testimony. And then there's other knuckleheads, guys like me, who ran from the Lord and have a horrible testimony. It's an embarrassing testimony. I'm ashamed, I'm amazed that the Lord 
kept his eye on me the whole time. I'm, am- I'm, just, I'm just grateful. It breaks me down when I think about it. A horrible testimony, but yet a wonderful, personal, loving God. That's the testimony that is good. And so here Jonah, as, as Jonah came to his senses, hey, I think, you know, I've got to just run from the Lord. But he came to his senses in, in Jonah 2.9, and, and Jonah proclaims, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. In the most desperate point in Jonah's life, he said, I will, Father God, Jehovah God, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will thank you in all things. I, I am in the I'm in the waiting room of hell. But Lord God, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Man. Jonah came to his senses, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is is of the Lord, Jonah proclaims for us this morning through the revolution, revelation of the Holy Spirit. Salvation is of the Lord. Previously, in Jonah chapter 2, verse 8, Jonah proclaims uh, about the ungodly, the ungodly regard worthless idols. That's what the ungodly does. Uh, Jonah is is realizing and proclaiming. The ungodly regard worthless idols, and in doing so, they forsake their own mercy. The ungodly regard worthless idols. They worship worthless idols. And wouldn't it be a tough day, you know, if you you had your, your false idol, you know, you're carrying around all the time? Oh, here's my, my, my false idol, and I've got it right here, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, what happened to my idol? It's gone. It was here just a minute ago. Right? What a hopeless life. I mean, I, I know I had, had that little guy here somewhere. Where did he go? We bought a, a Christmas gift for our son, and we went to wrap it the other day, and and we can't find it. Literally. <laughs> Literally. I mean, so, you know, and, and so it's just been an odd kind of a thing. And so we can lose things. So I don't want to have a little carved idol, a little guy that I depend on that I'm going to lose. I mean, I know I just put it right here. Where'd it go? They forsake their own mercy. They regard, the ungodly regard worthless idols, and in doing so, they forsake their own mercy. God has mercy for everyone. God desires that none should perish. That's God's desire. So what's your desire today? God's desire is that you don't perish. That's His desire. We, But again, us that are born again, we are prone to wander, therefore we must remember Galatians chapter 4. Paul the Apostle writing, Galatians, writing to the Galatian church in chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, Paul the Apostle proclaiming, God sent His Son, born of a woman, yes, born under the law, sent to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the adoption to sonship. God sent His Son, in other words, so we can become the family of God. The family of God. God's gift of perfection is the only way for humankind to enter into God's ordained adoption. Jesus proclaiming, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. John 14, 6. You don't have a problem with me. Your debate is not with me. I'm just repeating what 
Jesus Christ has spoken. If you have a problem with Jesus being the way, the truth, and the only way to come to God, you got a problem with Jesus, not me, not this church. you got a problem with God. And I'll leave you to it. You go to battle with the Lord. I don't recommend it. It's not necessary. But hey, Jesus Christ is God's gift of perfection. And when we enter into the presence of a holy God, we better come in perfection. God's Christmas gift, Jesus Christ, is contrary to our feeble attempts to approach God. It's contrary. When we try to come into the presence of God with our feeble attempts, not going to work. God's Christmas gift, Jesus Christ, perfection. Within works-based religions, people become a god. Well, this is what I'm going to do to be saved. You know, the, the one that kind of cracks me up is this idea of karma. Well, karma will get him because he did something wrong. He did something wrong. Well, who's, who's to say it was wrong? Well, the guy needed money to eat, so he stuck a gun in that lady's ear and took her wallet. What's, you know, the guy was hungry. What's wrong with that? I mean, he had to eat, right? He's got a, a kid at home, so hey, what's wrong with that? You mean karma's going to come back on him? Who's to say that was wrong? That's how silly karma is. Who's the judge of what's right or wrong? Oh, all of a sudden, I am. Oh, I didn't like what that person did. Therefore, I'm going to wish bad karma on them. Really? Well, wouldn't wishing bad karma on someone sort of put you in a position of sensitivity? Man, you're wishing something bad on, on someone, so now maybe you're going to get some bad karma. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? This is a silly, infantile, elementary position that has not been thought out at all. Karma. Yeah, I'm going to wish bad karma on that guy. Boy, you better duck then. Because bad karma is coming your way too. Because that guy happens to be my friend. So I don't like what you're, you're wishing on him. So I'm going to wish bad karma on you. I mean, where does it end? It's foolishness. It's absolute foolishness when we st slow down and consider some of the things that are being offered to us through the media, through ungodly friendships. I mean, we need to have acquaintances. Believe me, I've got plenty of unsaved acquaintances, and I, li and I just listen to some of the nonsense that they're entertaining, and I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, I see why I had to come out of that lifestyle. Lord, thank you. But what a joy, as we sang this morning. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us is born a child, a son, is given, and the government, the government, the government will be on his shoulder. Wow, cool. And he will be called Wonderful. Counselor. Wasn't that a great song we sang this morning? Wonderful, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Man, what a blessing. What a joy. What a relief. No longer my works. Now I'm motivated to bless the Lord in whatever fashion that he sees fit. I'm motivated, but I'm not required. I'm motivated, though, to serve the Lord. Because unto us a child is born. So now I'm motivated. Lord, I want to do this for you. Would you mind? The Lord said, no, I'd, I'd like you to consider some of these things. But, don't, but slow down a little bit there, Tiger. Stick with me. Isaiah 7.14 Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. So unto us, a, a child is born. How are we going to know who this child is? Well, he, he will give, give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, 
and will call him Emmanuel. I mean, this is clearly documented in the Gospel of Luke. So here's your sign way back in Isaiah's days, hundreds of years prior. So you're going to be looking for the child that is born. This is what you're going to be looking for. The virgin and the child will be named Emmanuel. God with us. Jesus, God with us, the perfect gift. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. The perfect gift. And finally this morning, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, picking up at verse 11, and I'll just read to us, for there is born, Luke delivers the reality, there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So Luke was very had a very good understanding of the writings of Isaiah. Hey, today, this prophecy, a prophecy that Isaiah gave today is the day of the birth of our Savior. Jesus Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. Luke is embellishing on exactly what Isaiah prophesied. This will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And we're going to look at this scripture tonight and find great comfort in the detailed report from Luke concerning the birth of Christ. We're going to look at that tonight. But let me just finish our thought. And, so, and suddenly there was the angel and a multitude of of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace and goodwill toward men. If I could ask the worship team to come join me. Do you have that peace this morning? Do you have that assurance of God's perfect gift? which is simply, simply found in Jesus Christ. We study Jesus all throughout the year, don't we? Yes. And we find Him all over the pages of the Old Testament, the New Testament. We find Jesus written on personal tablets, if you will. People's lives. People's lives change. And there's no other way that we could credit anything but the finished work of Jesus Christ, right? I mean, we, we look, we search, and we find Jesus all throughout the year. And in the month of December, if you will, starting really with Thanksgiving, but at the end of the year, each and every year, we have the crescendo of the revealed Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't it a joy? What an absolute joy. But it's important that we're reminded, hey, all have sinned. All. That means all. <laughs> all have sinned. And it, it's, that's a good humbling reminder. And the other reminder is, Lord, we are prone to wander. We are. I mean, we just are. And it's okay to consider that. And it's okay to say, Lord, as you know, I need help in this department. Lord, you know that. And so are you born again is the question. Are you born again this morning? Have you come into this fellowship this morning with Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you've not, that's okay. If you're not here with Jesus Christ as Savior and you want to know about it, we're going to give you that opportunity this morning to come. After we break and after we begin to file out, if you don't have Jesus and you're looking for Christ this morning, I'm going to invite you to come up to the front of the platform, the stage this morning, and just say, you know what? I heard what you said, Pastor, but I just don't quite know if I'm right with God through the finished work of Christ. That, that's all you're going to say. Just, you know, would you help me with that? Or are you going to come talk to our, our church elder, Sam? And we're going to get you on the right track. And we're going to help you receive that gift 
that perfect gift from God the Father, who is Jesus Christ. Are you out there on the internet listening and watching and wondering? Send us an email. You see the email address. You'll find it. You'll find our webpage. Contact us. We'll be glad to help you out in having an understanding of how simple it is to receive family membership into the family of God. We'd love to work with you with that. Simple process. can even be done over the internet. Imagine that. Praise the Lord. If you need Jesus today, reveal that clearly and joyfully. We would love to receive you. Merry Christmas. See you back here at 5 p.m. Just for a kickback. Kind of a, I call it just a fireside gathering tonight at 5. Don't worry, we'll get you home early. Praise the Lord. Join us by standing. Let's enjoy the choir that the Lord has put together for us. And most of all, let's go out glorifying and praising the Lord, shall we? Merry Christmas. Let's give it up to the choir. It's pretty cool, huh? They did a great job. We're going to worship the Lord right now. So. Rudolph, don't, 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 I forgot where I was. Sorry. Sorry. Greg will be talking to me afterwards. So. Christmas, everybody. God bless you. I hope everything is good and, and cheerful and bright. God bless you. Hi, everybody. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we wanna challenge you, why not share these videos? You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries, but again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.